Hello, hi and welcome to today's video in which we're going to look at HMIs and a little bit too alarming. This is a huge topic and it definitely does not fit in 15 minutes. It, it, I would have to make four or five videos to or more to cover all the things that we have for alarming. This is just an intro to it and how you can do basic alarming on HMIs, which is very easily done and easily to be configured. So I will just create a new HMI here and I will take this. Doesn't matter which type you have, they all have alarming, at least all the um, comfort panels. Won't give it a name. I will start the device visit. Do I need the device visit? I actually don't need the device visit for this. I will start it anyway because I uh, just like to have it and it's like five seconds. I do not connect a PLC right now. Of course, everything we do could be connected to a PLC. Of course, the alarms could come from a PLC. I will now just use internal HMI tags, um, but you can, of course, apply the same things to variables that are sitting on the PLC. If you don't know how to connect to the, an HMI to the PLC, check out my video, check out my channel. There's a list uh, where I, there's a video where I show how to con communicate HMI PLC. Today, it's all just HMI. But where the variables come from doesn't matter. You could also uh, choose a PLC. Screen alert doesn't matter. There is this predefined screen here, which is called alarms. And you see unacknowledged alarms. You can have alarm lines, top, bottom. You can have pending alarms. There's so much. There's so much. I usually deselect those because I, uh, all of them because I want my own design here. Uh, I just want one screen. I don't want system buttons and I don't need any buttons. So here we go. A blank HMI, right? A blank HMI. Um, what we need is here on the right side. You see it in my toolbox. We have under controls. We have the alarm view. Is it called alarm? Hello. <laughs> in controls. Uh, this is the alarm view. Yes, the alarm view. You can just drag and drop this on any screen that you want to. And you see this is already um, a nice little window. Already, if I now save my project and if I simulate the HMI now, you will see some pending alarms in the beginning and they will directly go away. So there's already a lot that this thing does in the background. We are now adding some alarms to it. I will simulate this by um, by pressing a button. If I press this button, it simulates right now a broken sensor. It simulates a broken sensor. As long as I press this button, the sensor stays broken. If I release the button, the sensor is okay again. Right. So what do I need to do? Of course, I need a variable here. Um, and here's one point. This alarming system only works with integer or with word, with like number variables. It does not work with Boolean. So you have to have a word or an integer or a short integer, some, something like this. That's why I will create now an HMI tag. I will create a new tag and this will be called um, uh, alarm, alarms, alarm co collection. And as I said, it is an integer and on the HMI, I cannot choose word because the HMIs can only work with integer. And um, and you see, I choose internal tag because it's only on the HMI. You could, of course, if you had a PLC connected now, well, select a connected PLC and choose a variable there, which I do not have. Um, so there's my alarm collection. I will make this float and push it on, this, on the next screen so I can drag and drop while it's still there. So this broken sensor, if I press the button, this variable or one bit inside this integer will be triggered. So I go here, I go to properties, events, um, and I want this to be there as long as I press the button. So I want to add a function and this function is set bit in set bit while key pressed. So as long as I press the key, a bit is set. And I take my alarm collection here, I can just drag and drop this. Um, it, Okay, I can't drag and drop it. Strange, but it's okay. Um, I have to select it with the three dots. I select my alarm collection. And now in this, uh, it's an integer, so <coughs> 16 bit, sorry. So 16 bit. Now I'm looking just at bit zero. So this uh, variable that we have, alarm collection, could have 16 different alarms in there. I'm right now just looking at bit number zero, which is important now because um, if I do this now, I press the button and the bit will be on, 
but nothing else happens because we have not defined it as an alarm yet. Um, we have this variable, which will one bit will turn true, and if I release it, will turn uh, false again, but that's it. Pretty stupid. We, of course, need an alarm, right? And there we have it. Here in, on the left side, we have something called HMI alarms. So if I go in here in my HMI alarms, we have discrete alarms, we have analog, we have controller alarms, we have system events, we have alarm classes, we have alarm groups. You see there's already a lot pre-configured. Um, so we were, as I said, it would need maybe five, six videos to cover the whole topic. I will just cover discrete alarms and analog alarms right here. Um, so let's make a new discrete alarm. Discrete means is something on or is something off? That's it. In contrast to analog, analog is, is this bigger than 23? Like this is really asking for an analog number. This is asking for a, uh, for a Boolean. So we can add new alarms. I just double clicked and you see we now have an alarm with an ID one. You can also give this uh, your own IDs like, uh, br br I don't know, A0. This is my alarm A0. I can give this a name. Broken sensor one. You could of course give it a better name. And now I will also say, hey, there's a text, there's an alarm text that can be displayed to the person that actually sees it. Um, and this is sensor01 is broken, please repair, something like this. I wouldn't put the please repair here, that's okay. Then we have the next is an alarm class. I will get to that in a second. For now, I just want this to be a warning. <clears throat> and now we need the so-called trigger tag. The trigger tag is, of course, the one I have here. Now, why can I not drag and drop today? <laughs> Usually I can drag and drop. Uh, my trigger tag, I just selected from the drop, drop down here. And now we also have to select the trigger bit. Remember what we did here on the root screen. So this is connected to bit number zero. Of course, I want that. This is now just because I only have it on the HMI. Of course, if you have it on the PLC, you also know which bit which sensor is connected to which bit, uh, you would have to. If I now would select bit number one, that doesn't work because it's looking at a different spot. So we have to look at this. And that's already my trigger. Uh, that's already my alarm. So if I now actually um, start my HMI here, what we can see is of course the stuff in the beginning. And if I break the sensor now, you see sensor one is broken. You see it on the top, it tells you acknowledge group, we won't look at a lot of details. You see the number that we put in there. We see a time and a date. We see a status. That's going to be important soon. And we see, of course, the text that we put in there. Sensor zero one broken, right? If I release it, not pressed anymore, it is gone, right? <clears throat> so what does this I stand for, right? We will see that in a second because I want a second alarm. I want the same thing. I want the same thing, but a little bit different. So I'll take my broken sensor, I will copy and paste. I'll call this broken sensor two, right? Broken sensor two. Um, and this sensor is a little bit different. We can break it and we can also repair it. So this one was as long as I press it, it's active, uh, it, it's broken. If I release it, it's not broken anymore. Here it is, this breaks the sensor, sensor still broken, still broken. I repair the sensor, sensor is repaired, right? So those two kind of go together. <clears throat> so what we need to do here is now, of course, not um, set bit while key pressed. Here we need, of course, set bit, right. <clears throat> which keeps the bit active as uh, set, set bit in tag. Set bit in tag, which keeps a bit active in a tag that we select. Of course, I want this variable, my alarm collection. Alarm collection. And now I do not want the bit zero because bit zero is taken by the first sensor here. I want bit one, right? So this will trigger the alarm that is in, or this will trigger the bit number one here. If I hit this one, I want to reset, reset bit and tag. And of course, I want to reset the same bit that we just had, uh, which is one. So now if I press this, bit is set. If I press this, bit is reset. What do we need to do? We need to define this alarm. So I go back to my HMI alarms. I add a new one. Maybe this is my alarm number 81. 
this is i would call this broken sensor 02 and there is an alarm text sensor 02 is broken right and now also interesting here because this will stay i press it once and then it will stay until we repair the sensor right and to be prepared. And now we can also do a so-called info text. If I click on my alarm here and there's an info text, right, in properties, please repair it. And now I could write like a text blower how to do it, but I won't because I it's something generic here. Right now, I don't want this to be a warning. This should be an alarm so we can, uh, an error, so we can really see the difference. And you see, I cannot choose the bit that we had before because that would be the same error. Now I need to choose a different bit which we have. Now I save, right? I save, I can now um, simulate and let's see. So let's see, I break the first sensor, right? Sensor zero is broken. I break the other one and you see, same story. One difference that we see here, do you see this little exclamation mark here in the beginning? This makes a difference. Exclamation mark indicates it's an error and no exclamation mark means it's just a warning. Warnings are usually fine. They're just information. Exclamation marks, errors are pretty bad, right? And now sensor two is broken. And if I, re so sensor one is also broken. Sensor one is repaired by releasing the button. Sensor two, similar, but I need to press the second button. Look at what happens if I press the second button. Text is still there. Very strange, very strange. Text is still there. And what can we see? It went from I to I O, right? This one here only has I. The second one has I when I break it and O when I repair it. It's the following. If we have I, that means incoming. So the error is there and it is active. Right now the error is there or the warning, whatever we place there. If I do this, it is incoming, it is I and O outgoing. So it's already gone. We have already repaired the sensor, right? So I incoming or outgoing <clears throat> and um, this we now to us we need to acknowledge right? there is also this acknowledge field here if I press this this error is acknowledged because it was incoming and outgoing so it's already repaired I can acknowledge if it's just incoming and I try to acknowledge it will say IA which means incoming and acknowledged which can't be like like it's still there it tells me the problem is still there. You tried to say, hey, it's not there, but it is still there. So what do we need to do? Of course, repair the sensor, this, right? <clears throat> so that's a little bit a difference between a warning. Here, warning is just there. And as long as it's there, it's here, it's incoming, it's incoming, and it's already gone if I repair it with an error, right? I have it incoming, I have it outgoing, it's still there, and I need to acknowledge, right? That's the difference between a warning and an error. So that's discrete, right? Those are discrete, pretty simple. That's just the basics. You see it's already 13 minutes, 20 seconds, but I still want to cover the analog alarms, right? Analog alarms are very similar. The only thing we need for analog alarms is now, of course, a new variable. Um, uh, let's say tank pressure. Like we have a tank system and there it, the tank has a pressure, or let's say temperature. I like temperature actually more temperature so the tank has a certain temperature um, and I want to display an alarm when the temperature reaches a certain value so let's say here it's an analog alarm it's analog alarm one pressure high right if the pressure is high but still okay I want to have an a warning uh, not pressure temperature high. temperature high a uh, tank temperature is getting high. Okay. That's just a warning, right? This is just a warning that's displayed um, in the same list that we just had. And of course, we need a trigger tag. Make a guess. This trigger tag is now my tank temperature. And we need to define here a limit, which could be either a constant or an HMI tag, so a variable. I will take it a constant. If the temperature is higher, then 50, I could also choose lower, of course, that makes sense. Um, we will get a warning and I want the second analog alarm. Temperature, hot, hot, hot either. <laughs> it's very hot, right? Um, 
tank temperature at um way too high um and as the as the text as the info text here i would also say here uh fix now not fix not fix now exclamation mark and this is of course now an error and i also want the tank temperature and this is when it's above 75 and of course i need to display that somehow so i will add on my screen here on my root screen i will add a um a slider there it is uh, with the temperature, of course, this should be different. This should be that the layout should be uh, right. And that looks ugly now. Yes, better. Ah, that's way better. And I don't want the semantic thing here. Here we go. <clears throat> so with this, I should control the temperature. I just want to process the tag here. It could, of course, the tag could be also from the PSC or from somewhere else. Right. This is just simulating it here. So. And let's see, I save the project, I uh, turn my simulation mode on here. So the first two, the warning for the broken sensor still works, broken sensor and repaired the sensor too and acknowledged it. And now we should have at 50, you see the tank temperature is getting too high if we're above 50. And if we're going below 50, it will be gone because it's just this warning, right? There we go. And if I go above 75, did I say 75, you see, it's way too hot. Now, if I click on this way too hot and I go down here, you see this? This displays this info text, which could be like, like run to it and, and I don't know, could be some information for the guy that needs to fix the error. This down here. If I don't have one here is getting too high, it will say no info text available. That's how it is. So it's now 75. If I go below 75, you see the I turns to an IO which means incoming and outgoing, so it's already repaired. And if I go even below 50, you see the warning is gone. What do we need to do here? Hey, we repaired it, the temperature is now lower, uh, so please acknowledge the whole thing. Acknowledge the button, and we see the error is gone. So that's it for very basic. There's way more to it, but very basic. Um, alarming for HMIs. And uh, you saw discrete, so basically Boolean alarms and analog alarms, all displayed here. Very short project, 20, 17 minutes, that's fine. So I still have a second to give a praise to you all. Everyone, highly appreciated for watching the videos. Thank you so much. Um, if you want to support me, just press the button down there, like and subscribe, right? I also have this very nice thing in my in the info text down there. I have a GoFundMe. A lot of people have already done, uh, basically thrown money at me. Thank you so much. Keep that up. I love it. <laughs> uh, but more important, uh, subscribe. Uh, do not forget to like. And I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye and have a nice day. <laughs>